I will present this tool that I developed while I was in the IDB and why you presented like very nice tools and complicated tools that do very interesting stuff and has like a very uh, clear impact on public policy. This tool is way more like the brick on the house. So we were, uh, while I was working with uh, Oscar, uh, we were working with uh, Waze data and Facebook data and Google data. We had like a lot of different data sources and there, all the data was indexed in different grid uh, tiles. And, and then I built this tool, which is a very low code tool. So it doesn't have a very direct impact on public policy, but it's very useful apparently because 12,000 people downloaded so far and used it. So I will explain it's like a very uh, different from the other tools that you just saw, but I will try to explain what is a gel tile, like what is a tile, what, what is a geospatial index system, and maybe you'll learn something today. And, and the, for the ones that code, maybe you also will uh, be able to use it uh, in your work. So pretty much this is bubble grid. Uh, it's a Python package, just that. For those who don't, don't know, Python, a Python is a language, like the programming language. And the, a Python package is like a software which is available online that you can just download. Uh, I will do a live demonstration on how it works. Uh, but first I will explain what is a geospatial index system. It's pretty much what, uh, how to, uh, divide the world in squares or hexagons or whatever you want. So as any good standard, uh, uh, there are like five different standards for that. So Bing uses one standard, which is called quad tree, which is also, uh, also called Bing tile system. And it's pretty much how the maps load that fast is because they save those images in quad trees. So it's a structure that is higher, has a hierarchy. So you have like the word divided in four and then for each quadrant, you have like four divisions and so on. Uh, so it's a way to, for you to divide the world and then have like an index system of it. Like you have an ID for each part of the world and you have like parents for each of those tiles. But Uber also created uh, an index, but Uber index, uh, geospatial indexes are hexagons. Uh, so they have like very nice images of the, of, of the index uh, system. So you have hexagons and why hexagons? because hexagons are, have good uh, properties. Uh, all, the neighbors, all the neighbors of the hexagons are equidistant. So they have the same distance from the center. While uh, like the Bing tile system, uh, the neighbors are not, uh, they, they don't have the same distance between themselves. And that's a problem when you're doing statistics and so on and so forth. And if you have a triangle uh, tile system, uh, that that uses triangles, uh, so it's a mess. So that's why people usually use either squares or hexagons. But Bing has one, Uber has one, uh, Google has one, which is called S2, which is like weird uh, squares. And then I had a problem because Oscar, uh, we got uh, data from Facebook, and Facebook gave their data. So we, they have like this very nice movement range data that we use to track COVID and our uh, dashboards that we put online. Uh, but the data were on Bing tiles and Google data, especially Waze data were on S2 tiles. And we wanted to use H3 tiles to do our statistics. And then I had to build a tool to, to manage all these different tiles. And that's, that's pretty much what bubble grid is. So as an example, what you can do is like to, uh, to, get, so, uh, to get points, data points, uh, and then group them on the tile. And then you have also, also 
So I'll, I'll always have the same tile for any data point that you want to, to plot. So this is an example of uh, buses in Rio de Janeiro uh, that I used uh, the H3 tile system to plot it. But if I wanted to also plot uh, dense popul population density or number of schools or whatever I want, I can use the same tile system and then I can, it's easier to, to match, mix and match the data. Uh, so pretty much that's uh, why Bubble Grid exists. It exists to allow you to easily handle this, diff those different tile systems that had different uh, APIs and old Python packages. So pretty much uh, it eases your development. So I will show you, I will do a live demo. You can pretty much download Bubble Grid like that. Uh, you can pip install it if you're a Python developer, pip install Bible Grid, and then you have it on your machine. That's as simple as that. And then you have available grids. So you have S2, H3, and the Bing tile. And then if you plot, let's say you have some, fun some, some functions that you can use, but you can plot uh, a gel tile. Uh, you can plot a point, and you want to know which tile is this point. Uh, and then you can you can choose any of your if it's S2 or an H3 and it's going to plot whatever tile is, is on there and you can change the area so if I want to a tile that has approximately like 10 kilometers square of area uh, you can run it uh, and it's going to show you the tile that corresponds to pretty much 10 kilometers square uh, and and you can also do, which is very useful, maybe if you have a geometry, let's say the geometry of Rio de Janeiro, uh, like that, and you want to fill it with uh, any given tile of any given size, uh, you can just use bubble grid as well. You can use this function called polyfill. Uh, and you can pass the geometry and you can choose the area of the grid and it's going to plot it for you. And it's going to figure out which tiles you, uh, you, have, to, uh, you have to fill it. And it does it for any of those uh, available tiles. So here I have S2, then if I want to change for S3, I can just change it there and it's figure out for you which tile is what. And you can change the area here. So if I want tiles of, 30 kilometers, I, they, they got bigger and they flew out uh, the, the city. And then I know I, I want S2 tiles now and then we can just change it. So I, I built it for me because I was suffering uh, uh, with those different data sets. And I decided to put it online and apparently people liked it uh, and I'm glad about it. Uh, and it's pretty much it. Like, if if you are interested on it, I can go further on more utilities that it has. But it's it's like very it's like conversation between developers, I guess. Uh, uh, but I will I'll stop here, uh, and I will congratulate all the other participants because the other projects were super good, and I'm super interested as chief data officer here at Janeiro to use all of the projects here and test them, test them out here.